All right, another type of materials failure that can occur has nothing to do with cyclic loading, but it does happen over time. It's called creep. Creep is time-dependent, permanent plastic deformation under a constant load. So the load's not cycling. Think of a bookshelf. You set the books on this shelf, and you just let them sit. And it doesn't deform on day one or two or week one or two. But after the four years of being in college, you take the books off and you find that this deformation has occurred. It's now bowed into the smiley face. You see this in roads. You see this in roofs of buildings. You see this all over the place. So this is all creep. Creep is, again, it's deformation. It's just happening at a really slow length scale. Okay? Uh, it actually occurs in stages. Just like fatigue crack growth occurred in stages where we saw that cracks initially grow quite fast. And then they reach this steady state Paris region and then they speed up again up until fracture. We see the, uh, a similar trend in creep. In creep, you get uh, the fastest growth initially. Well, first off, there's some initial strain on, you know, at time t equals zero. We'll call that strain not. It does initially strain. The second I, I bend something, it strains. And then if I let this sit for several years, the deformation continues even under the same load. It grows rapidly at first, and then it reaches this steady state region. We'll call this steady state. That just means that it's not changing over time. It's a constant rate. The rate is constant there. And then it reaches this tertiary region, which is a rapid onset before it fails in the end, right? So the thing to know about strain is that it would be useful to understand this steady state region in the center because then we could predict it, right? If we know the rate at which strain is occurring, we could predict how long something will last until it fails, right? So that's primary, secondary, tertiary, and again, secondary is sometimes called steady state uh, creep strain, right? Okay. So just like with crack growth, where a larger stress caused a faster crack growth, we see a similar thing here. When you plot strain versus time, here you have different slopes. So the steady state region is not the same for all these different conditions. At high temperatures or high stress, you get the fastest creep strain rate. At low temperatures and low stress, you get the slowest creep strain rate, okay? Um, generally, this happens at high temperatures. If you're uh, less than maybe like 40% of the melting point, uh, you don't see a large effect here, right? We can model strain rate. It's a thermally activated process. We're going to see so many Arrhenius-style equations, which is some sort of thermally activated process in material science. So much of material science is thermally activated, meaning it goes much faster at high temperatures because there's an exponential with an activation energy, Q, that's our activation energy, and then you have RT. R is the gas constant, T is temperature. And then in this case, the strain rate, epsilon with a dot on top, that means the rate of strain, so the rate at which it's deforming, um, is equal to k, a constant, times sigma, the applied stress, right? That's our stress, to the n. So k and n are going to be materials constants, as is the activation energy. Now, how do we figure these things out? There's lots of ways to do it. You could take this equation, and you could linearize it. This is not a linear equation right here, but we can make it look linear by doing the following. We need to uh, take the natural log of the strain rate, take the natural log of the strain rate, then we have to take the natural log of both sides, it's going to equal natural log of k plus n times the natural log of stress plus negative q over rt, okay? So we can make this look linear now. If you plot this, this right here could be y. Plotting this against 1 over t, this becomes x, this becomes m, and these two become b. So y equals b plus mx. So we were able to linearize it. Or in other words, as you can see as it's written here, the slope of this, if you plot the natural log of the strain rate against 1 over temperature, 1 over temperature in Kelvin, you should be able to have that and set it equal to negative Q over R. And since R is a constant, the gas constant, 8.3 and 4 joules per mole Kelvin, all of a sudden you have an activation energy, right? So that's pretty fantastic. Uh, so this is a, an example of steady state creep strain rate. Again, you would need uh, multiple equations. You, since we have three unknowns, we're going to need information to solve three equations. And we'll see some examples of that worked out, okay? What else can we say about that? Different values of N might 
uh, indicate different mechanisms of creep. So creep is time, time dependent plastic deformation, but that can occur via diffusion along grain boundaries. It could occur through diffusion along what's called vacancies, dislocation motion, grain boundary sliding. We haven't talked about those yet in this class. We will get to vacancies and grain boundaries and dislocations uh, in future chapters. But realize that different uh, constants here might happen in the same material, but due to different mechanisms. So different temperature regimes, you might see different constants coming into effect. All right? So that is creep.